What's up, you guys, and welcome to another episode of the Ask Alex Show. But today we have a very special episode for today. Today I have one of the legendary comedians in this game. You've seen him in BAPS. You've mm-hmm. seen him. <laughs> you've seen him. Uh, want to be a player with Bill Bell? Want, how to be a player? How to be a player, man? How to be a want player? Be a player. See, <laughs> you young. It's all good. <laughs> how to be a player and a lot of other great classics. He's a, a comedy. Uh, commentator on comedy height and he is well known as pierre the great by dave chappelle i have pierre with me today how are you doing pierre i'm doing actually good thank you alex for having me man i appreciate it brother i appreciate it man look at you man your your, your background look at all sexy and expensive nigga shit people don't know once you hit that camera off nigga you're in the bathroom somewhere and shit you know what i'm saying you got toilets and shower and shit behind you man but it look good now it look good on camera Oh, uh, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I spent uh, a lot of money on the studio, so I just wanted to get my own little thing. Going. I'm trying to be like comedy hype. Like I know, know that's right. You're on the way there, brother. You're on the way. Look good though. It look good, man. I, I I I applaud you for that. I mean, I, I've seen some some some. I've done some interviews, man. Nigga in his kitchen and shit. You know, in the bathroom. Like, damn, Blair, you can't throw something in the background. Nothing. Nigga in his closet and shit. You know, kitchen table. But you're doing it. Yeah, man. Thank you. I, I really do appreciate that coming. I'm um, coming from a comedian I've been following. But man, before we get into like your history, I just want to know how have you been doing since this whole pandemic has broke out? Like, how's it affected your career and, you know, shows and just things mm-hmm. in general? Um, actually, it's been doing pretty well. I, I you know, I had a lot of stuff I, I filmed that I never really released uh, and social media, you know, during this time though, it gave me an opportunity to release it, uh, you know, skits and uh, start my own podcast, which I, I love to do. Yes, you got yours. I got mine. Boom. PS podcast. There it is. Yeah. Panic room. Yeah. Um, but I'm being, I'm getting real connected with people more than I had before. Usually I just get connected with people during my shows or at my shows, mm-hmm. but now with social media, staying home, I was doing that, uh, you know, getting connected with a lot of people. I didn't realize the love I had out there, the, the tremendous love, amount of love. I was like, wow. I just, you know, I didn't realize that. Because, you know, you go to a comedy club, you see people come out and support you. Yeah, but when you get on social media and really hang on there for a while, you see a lot of people, you know, you'll, you'll see what your value is to people. And a lot of people, you know, definitely dug me. And um, so, um, but then like in the last two months, man, my phone been ringing off the hook get back out there on the road do shows and stuff maybe because of comedy hype i got opportunity to do comedy hype which i love a lot uh you know get my perspective people get you know real chance to see me you know you know yeah. see how i think and stuff and i actually surprised that people not guess that surprised but they, mm, like my friends know how i get down they respect mm-hmm. me because i come with them to, with the real you know mm-hmm. and i didn't really realize how people in general would feel but the the, the response has been 95 percent positive man so i'm i'm pretty excited yeah, that that's actually pretty uh, inspiring to hear because I noticed that when you uh, joined Comedy Hype, you know you're you're a, a panelist on there with Capone and um, mm-hmm. Rita and Brent, Rita and, Symphony, and, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you guys give some interesting perspective on a lot of current topics. But uh, uh, one thing that stood out to me with you being on that show is that uh, I uh, my dad used to have the um, Deaf Comedy Jam tapes. And wow, we your on- dad. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> and you were on the tape, and I saw your special, and I just wanted to know what was it like, you know, being on Def Comedy Jam, having oh, Martin Lawrence man. host you, and oh, man. like oh, you seen all the greats, like Chris Tucker, Bernie mm-hmm. Mac, all those people. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what was it mm-hmm. like? Um, oh man, <laughs> man, you know what? I, I, when you're in it back then, it's just part of what you're doing. You know, you're up there with all, you don't know who's classic. Like a lot of people don't realize I'm from Washington, DC. And I came up with Chappelle, Martin Lawrence. These are all amateurs at the time. We were all amateurs in the comedy clubs. Chappelle, yeah. Martin Lawrence, Tommy Davidson, uh, 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 Wanda Sykes. Uh, who else was that? Uh, Earthquake, uh, uh, Monique, Ashy Larry, uh, <laughs> Joe Claire. Teddy Carpenter, Chris Thomas was the mayor in Rap City. You know what I'm saying? We all came up together. Tony Woods, we all came up together. And while you're coming together, you don't realize you're just comics hungry and young trying to get in, you know, get, do what you get. And some of them became some of the biggest comedy stars of all time. Same thing with, with uh, Def Comedy Jam. I didn't realize how big it was going to be. See, I taped mine before it ever aired, you know, because mm-hmm. they tape a couple of them first, then it airs. Um, 
But I remember going to New York because New York was a place that people were fearful of. They, you know, that's where they boo you at Apollo. You know, had a reputation of you getting booed, so you mm -hmm. better bring it. New York don't play. You better watch out. Mm -hmm. So you know, we had all that going on. <laughs> and I, a lot of people don't realize this, but every episode we take five comedians, but only four made it. So who wasn't the funniest weren't, wasn't going to make it. Right. And some a lot of people got cut off out of the show at the first season. Um, and uh, that's why the reason Bernie Mac said, "I ain't afraid of you, motherfucker," <laughs> because actually a comic had got booed right before him. Mm -hmm. guy named Butch Burns, old comic, he got booed. So when he came out, he said that, and that's what made it work so you know beautifully for him. Um, but at the time, we didn't know, man. You know, I, I was on one of the first, like I said, the fourth show, fourth show ever aired, and I didn't know the impact. But when it came out, whoa. People actually wouldn't even go outside because they came on a Friday o'clock, Friday, 11 o'clock. I think mm -hmm. it was 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And people did not go out to the clubs until after 11.30 when it aired. Because then you go, if you were at a nightclub, you would see the attendance jump up at midnight. You know what I'm saying? It would go yeah, from half yeah. a crowd to pack because people were coming out for the last two hours because they wanted to stay home. That's before a lot of VCRs and all that kind of people weren't taping yeah. shows. So if you ain't catch that damn show, you missed it. You all you would hear about a comedian. So everybody yeah. wanted to stay home and see it. Yeah. So it was it was powerful. Yeah, yeah. My dad had old cassette tape VCR tape. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, of the uh, of of the show you and twelve nigga, like, wow, you twelve man? How old are you? Thirteen nigga? Shit, uh, uh, you know my dad. Said, uh, but go ahead. I well, you know it. what's funny? I I I watched it when I was like, I want to say yeah, when I was like like twelve, thirteen, right, probably around middle school because okay. like. Would, would turn me on to it like because my dad had like these huge cases of vhs tapes and he was into mm -hmm. like sure. star wars and like a lot of comedy um and funny my first comedy movie i saw from those tapes was how to be a player what <laughs> and, man, you, and it was man, you, you it was a double dose of me <laughs> exactly and you know going into that movie um uh you were in a really good film with a lot of great uh, comedians at that time mm -hmm. and Bernie Mac was in that movie uh, God mm -hmm. Rest His Soul uh, mm -hmm. what was it like working with him in that movie I know you didn't guys didn't have any on camera scenes together when I watched that yeah, movie yeah. but yeah, well, we had one we had one when he came outside the house and told us to get the hell out of front of his house we were all oh. in front of the car <laughs> And yeah, then one yeah, scene yeah. was when he chased us away from, a, he was going to the cleaners and he chased us, but we didn't have any long scenes, you're right, but we had like quick little ones. Um, yeah. Bernie was as cool as, you know, he, he, he seemed to be, you know, for those who, you know, seen, mm -hmm. people love Bernie Mac. Yeah. They just love Bernie Mac. Yeah. He's probably the only comedian I've never heard someone say something bad about. Yeah. Not saying like, you know, he wasn't funny or he was an ass or nothing. And I mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. Never have I come, heard somebody say, oh, he was a little dickhead or he wasn't cool. Um, when I was around, he was pleasant, you know, he just was in, cool and controlled, you know, mm -hmm. um, just really was, he was just a man's man. He wasn't goofy about nothing. He was just about that business. And, um, I enjoyed the little time that I spent with him. I did a couple of shows with him, concerts with him and stuff. So, mm -hmm. I was just about to ask, like, did you ever get a chance to do shows with him and the other rest of the Kings of the comedy was since he was part of that juncture? I sure did. In fact, I bet I have a book. Uh, that's right. You can get that book on Amazon. That's okay. right, right there. That's right. And it tells all the stories about the comedians that I met, who was cool, who wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and don't worry, black folks. You know, we got we got some black folks want to see some damn pictures. I know they got some pictures in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Gotta go through here. Some pictures, uh, yeah, some pictures up in here. But yeah, I got <laughs> oh damn, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, there's a section of pictures in it. But um, but yeah, there's a lot of comedians that I, I hung out with and did shows with, as you can see there, boom. Um it was great. It was great touring with us, you know. And now it's kind of cool, you know, to feel like we're a little bit the elder statesman. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, you know, it's it's weird to feel that way because I still keep the you know the freshest jays on, you know. what I'm saying the mm -hmm. freshest gear on and shit, so I still mm -hmm. feel young at heart and shit. But a lot of people give me that respect of being an OG, and I take it, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it was just a good time. It was it, it, we were lucky. I don't think there'll be another time like that ever in comedy again, at least urban comedy. You know, you um, because what you have to realize was. Those were comics who were been around for 20 years prior to ever being seen and no one really saw them before. You know what I'm saying? 20 years yeah. in the in the making. Yeah. Nowadays, as soon as you think you're funny, you online with some with some videos, you know what I'm saying, doing stand up. Yeah. So you you you're not nurturing 10 years of comedy, you know what I'm saying, before it yeah. explodes. So that's why y'all got the chance to see comics who had did comedy and most of them, 90% mm -hmm. of them had put at least five years of comedy in before you ever seen them before. You know what I'm saying? Very few yeah. things. Chris Tucker didn't do it. Chris Tucker was quick. But the rest of the comics, Bernie, Steve, me, all of us did five, 10 years. I think Bernie had done 17 years of comedy before you heard him. So you're going to get some tight, hungry people. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to now where you get a lot of comics who just think they're funny and put stuff out there and they're not really ready. But you got you get a chance to see them before they're you know really ready. 
Yeah, yeah, and that like I I have to agree that was definitely a great era because a lot of the stand ups and the movies that came out around the nineties, early two thousands. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I love those types of movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of those movies, you also did an amazing uh, movie called Baps, uh, mm-hmm. and I, I I thought your character was hilarious in that movie, working with Halle mm-hmm. Berry and the mm-hmm. the late uh, Natalie uh, Delise Reed. I, I was wondering. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your experience like being on set with uh, with Natalie and and Hailey and just uh, getting to know those actors as, uh, as you know as creators and entertainers? Right, I'll give you information, but remember they're in this book too. Uh-huh. Oh, Let man. you know, but no, nah, but I get it. Um, <laughs> it. It was my first role ever, man. Robert Townsend directed the movie, and he saw yeah. me at the comedy clubs a couple of times. He said, "I got something for you." And uh, I met with Hallie one day and he said, hey, you know, you got a movie shooting, let's uh, rock and roll with it. And I remember asking him like, why'd you pick me? Like, how'd you know I could act it all or whatever? He yeah. said, well, during rehearsals, if you weren't good, we will get someone else to fill your spot. <laughs> and, uh, okay, well, now I didn't know that, but I'm glad you told me no. But no, it was it was cool, you know, um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was just a beautiful thing uh, to, to get my first chance. You know, sometimes you get thrown into something that you don't know mm-hmm. how big something's gonna be and you just like, see the sink or swim and I just went in there and just you know swam with it and the fact that people love it I was like really that's my first time ever acting and stuff but they're like yeah it was really good and Hallie was so good and generous in her you know her part that made like she cried she cried on cue when she was crying at the end we were dancing we yeah. say cut they wipe her eyes out give her a little visine mm-hmm. wait about five minutes and stuff mm-hmm. and then we say and action and the next day turn around her eyes start welling up with tears I was like damn I was like, if I, if I was doing that, I need some onions or something. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, fuck, you know. Yeah, yeah, come, yeah, whisper my ear, man. Your mama just died. What? <laughs> and, and action. <laughs> you know, but uh, with her, she, she could do it. And, and that made it easier for me to act the opposite her. Yeah, yeah, and that's a that's a definitely a cult classic, definitely on my top top ten uh, in terms of comedy films. But you know, uh, what struck me about you, Pierre, is that uh, I remember when I was doing my research. Initially, when you got on a comedy hike, they reached out to you to do an interview, and I see you at, at the time who are the the pre well, the previous commentators who are not there now. Um, I forget their names, like Shay and Sade. They were interviewing you about you know your your. Uh, you know, about uh, your views about like power sure. and just mm-hmm. things of that mm-hmm. nature. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to know after you did your, your interview with Comedy Hype, how did you land a job with that particular organization? Um, they just liked the realness in me, the, my quick wit and the realness mm-hmm. with me. Um, I did, you know, the interview just with them solo uh, mm-hmm. with Comedy Hype. And then mm-hmm. I did with the, with the females, you know, he liked what I did with him solo. And he mm-hmm. said, I got a, these two females. Would you be interested in interview with them? I said, all right, fine. And then I said what I said. I was quick witted and you know, I kept it 100 how I felt. And with that being said, they um, about a week later, they said, you know, we have a TV show. We have an idea that we want to run around you. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, really? So they asked me, they said, here's an idea. Help us, you know, form it. So they gave me some names. They said, who do you want to work with? You know, I told them some people. Then we narrowed it down to some people. And um I actually uh, I asked for Rita Brent mm-hmm. and Pone and uh, another another person, but they couldn't do every, you know everybody. We're gonna try to mm-hmm. do some other people, just people. And uh, Rita wasn't available to come, uh, you know, to come all the time because she was in Mississippi at the time. Mm-hmm. And so they got Symphony, you know, to do it, and she fit in nicely, you know, yeah. as as a middle person. And then Rita came in and you know came back as much as she can, and now she's in Atlanta now, and she's coming back and knocking it out, you know. So it's, it's the trio, well, four. Four of us, yeah. And I didn't realize how people people really like that damn show. I mean, even comics come to me like, man, I'm glad you're on that damn show. You keep it real, dude. You keep it real. And and then sometimes I get, you know, in the comments, I don't read the comments like I used to, mm-hmm. but but you know, um, you know, sometimes in the comments I get it and it's okay. I mean, I yeah. honestly, but look, no one likes to be talked about negatively, but I get it. As long as I'm standing on my principles, what mm-hmm. I believe and I said was correct to me. Mm-hmm. Man, if you don't like it, it's okay. And sometimes people are, are, are it amazes me, even on my social media, comic Pierre on mm-hmm. Instagram or you know, wherever I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it amazes me how people don't really listen. Mm-hmm. They don't listen. They, 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 mm-hmm. We have a trigger of emotion that we just go from one to zero so quickly, you yeah. know, you know, because I can say something like, I don't, I'm just for instance, I mean, I didn't say I don't like grapefruit. Mm-hmm. And you know, somebody will tell me. Oh, mm-hmm. nigga, you ain't shit. You don't like fruit, nigga. What's wrong with fruit? <laughs> I'm like, I didn't say fruit. I said grapefruit, motherfucker. I ain't say fruit. All fruit. 
But they mind is, man, fuck you. You don't like fruit. You ain't shit, nigga. Like, what the fuck? Fruit's healthy for black people. That's why we dying and shit. So niggas <laughs> like you don't eat fruit and shit. I'm like, I didn't say that. I said, like, grapefruit. <laughs> but it's just our trigger, you know, our trigger. We don't listen. We don't listen. We're like, nigga, I, if you say you hate something, I'm going to blanket the whole damn thing. Or not, or just say dislike something. Like, man, that's not true. And it's just, I don't know. We, we need to get better with that, man. We need to get better. A lot of people in jail, a lot of brothers in jail right now behind them, emotions just popping off too quick and not listening to the situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I 100% agree with that. You know, when you bring that up uh, recently, about maybe a couple of weeks ago, Comedy Height put out an episode, I guess, with Lunell responding to your critique of the mm. Coming to America trailer. Sure, sure. And what I enjoyed with your response is that you kept that same energy. And in a lot of ways, I agree with you. When I saw the first mm. trailer, mm. I thought that it, I didn't understand why it was being made. Like, I, mm. I love the first movie and I'm sure. interested in the second one. But a lot of things that you said, I agree with. And then when you had that that conversation with, with Linnell, you just basically told her, like, hey, like, you know, I'm judging it based off the trailer. I still have not sure. seen the movie. Um, sure, sure. But my question I did have is that with uh, with movies being remade or making a sequel, if they asked you to come back to do like a BAPS 2, would you consider it or would you want to do focus on something original? Um, that's a good that's a good question. Uh, um, hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if the I'm, a, I'm a, if the script is well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, now that Natalie has passed, you know, I, I don't know because what I don't want to do is look old. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be, yeah. ain't nothing worse than that. Trying everybody looking all old and. You know, you know what I'm saying? And some people are emotionally attached to it at that period, and that, which I was trying to say at that period of time. They want to see how they look like that. They want to see AJ. They want to see me like that. You know, I mean, I had a, a wig on for it, but I can put the wig back on. But they want to see you in that same position. And that is what we shot that in 96. So it's like 25 years ago. Yeah. Come on, son. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I'm not really a whore for money, you know, you know, I'm <laughs> right, not, right. I, you know, for people that I, I've turned down some shit, you're like, what? <laughs> but nowadays the turn down game ain't real. Niggas just want to take anything. They hold themselves out to do any and everything and shit. And mm -hmm. they rather explain later on right, after y'all cuss them out. So you a whack ass nigga. Oh no, that's right. And then about <laughs> two months later, y'all like, oh, you're all right now. So, you know, we get like, we get like that. We, you know, we, we don't have no, no balls, but I've turned down stuff. That's why comedy hype likes me because of my realness of saying, mm -hmm. Hey, this is what I feel. If I feel it, it ain't about, you can't buy me. You can't mm -hmm. buy me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I know somebody gonna go, yes, you can't give a nigga eight million dollars. Well, okay, eight million dollars. What are you talking about buying me? You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna murder <laughs> nobody, but I'm gonna play BAPS two, be in BAPS two for eight million dollars. Yes, I would. Okay, yeah, you can buy me, but they ain't gonna offer me eight million dollars. You can't buy me legitimately what people would normally offer. You know what I'm saying? Something. Right. So I ain't that dude. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, of course, we all have a price. I guess it gets ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so I'm doing BAPS two again, you know. That's not something I'd be interested in. Um, I, in fact, have three movies I filmed, wrote, produced, and directed. I, that's, that's about to come out called Slice 1, 2, and 3. It's a horror comedy with a lot of comedians oh. in it. Yeah, like I did a movie called, I don't know if y'all remember, For the Love of Money. Yeah. I put a lot of comedians in that, in that movie. That's my own movie I wrote, produced, and directed that had a lot of people before they, you know, really took it to the next level. Uh, Ralphie May, the big white comic that rest in peace passed away. Mm -hmm. Atheon Crockett was in it. One yeah. of the Plastic Cup boys. I put a, you know, one thing I think I have, I have a good eye for comedian. Like, all right, I know this guy can do something in a movie. Like Robert did for me, saw mm -hmm. me, and think I could be in something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my next question because uh, I was going to move into For the Love of Money, the movie that mm -hmm. you put together. And mm -hmm. I was going to ask, since we're in the age now where distribution is easily made, like it, it made easy to do, like it, like it wasn't before back then, would you consider... Mm -hmm doing a if not like a reboot or a sequel to for the for the love of money because um i saw that later in life like when i was in college right. and i loved it um oh, would you consider that. would you consider doing something like that again sure 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 sure, sure. I, I i would i mean i depend on how i wrote and i wrote that one um mm -hmm. i hadn't seen how the storyline would be a little different um but it became a little cult classic, man. I mean, yeah. I made that movie in 14 days, man, with a little bit of money. I think I made $75,000 I spent to make that movie, man. Wow. And it went on to do really well on video. Uh, yeah. It had it actually got a theatrical release. It mm -hmm. went to like six theaters, man, that, which is amazing for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get a movie into theaters. Yes. But uh, it, it, went to, it went to theatrical release, man. And to this day, people still love it, you know, for the love of DA, for the love of money. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed the new one, Slice mm -hmm. 1, 2, and 3. It's mm -hmm. the same kind of feel. So it's a horror comedy. If you like my humor, you're mm -hmm. going to like that stuff. I'm sarcastic. I'm, I think I'm very funny. <laughs> I don't like to 
to do like stuff that you've seen over and over again and stuff like oh shit, this joke this is a joke all right mm -hmm. i like to ha surprise people in my hot comedy They're like what i even shot an hour special called make america mixed again because i'm mixed you know my mother's <laughs> white my father's black yeah, yeah so we're about to get we try to get that out there uh yeah i shot that at the uh, roxy theater in hollywood uh so looking forward to getting that out mm -hmm. awesome awesome and uh before we wrap up i wanted to uh have you tell us about your uh, your upcoming movie slice because uh, i knew i knew that you were uh i knew okay. you had something in the works but mm -hmm. uh but also tell us about the panic room as well because i know you started that podcast as well yeah. so how yeah. is uh yeah. how's that yeah. been well one thing i want to say because this is people i guarantee y'all if y'all go now it's free mm -hmm. check this out you're going to love it and if you watch it i want you to put in the comments that you saw me on your show from mm -hmm. the fan, your fans that saw me on the show. Mm -hmm. It's called Dating Pierre, D-A-T-I-N-G, P-I-E-R-R-E. -E. Mm -hmm. Dating Pierre on YouTube. Okay. I shot six, seven episodes. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a web series. It's not, it's written and directed. It's like, it's not like a, a reality show. It's actual, it's about me living in Atlanta, dating different type of women mm -hmm. from, from hood rats, white girls, Church girls, handicapped girls, bougie girls, transvestite, mm -hmm. all kind of things, tranny, you name it. Mm -hmm. Different types. Each one's only 10 to 15 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So Dating Pierre on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Check that out. When I tell you, people love that. They have been begging me to do a sequel to that, a season mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. And after you watch it, anyone watches it, it's the thing funny. I say this mm -hmm. now, I'll stand up right here and say it. Mm -hmm. If you ain't gonna watch nothing else I do. You watch the first one, you're gonna be hooked. Mm -hmm. Watch that. You watch the first one of Dating Pierre on YouTube, you'll be hooked. And if you all, if you do watch it, don't forget in the comments, mention that you saw me on your show, on Alex's mm -hmm. show. All right. Mm -hmm. um, the question you were asking me about. Um, uh, uh, the Panic Room, and, um, Panic also, Room. Like, and also your Slice films as well. Mm -hmm. Panic Room. Mm -hmm. All right. The Panic Room is my podcast. Uh, we're doing season two. Um, I didn't do a big rollout for season one, but we had Country Wayne. We had, I mean, a little scrappy. We mm -hmm. had a whole bunch of people on my show. Um, uh, Miss Juicy, Clifton mm -hmm. Powell, uh, a whole bunch of comedians. Now, the thing that's different about my podcast, I feel like it's like a night show. Like, it's like a, like a late night show. We have, you know, I have my, I have my, my co-host uh, and I bring two female co-hosts. And well, one's a ride or die. My girl, uh, Tammy, she's always on the show. And then mm -hmm. I bring another female or sometimes male, but mostly female comedian. I want to get a voice for female comics on my show. Mm -hmm. So we do that. We talk about trending topics and so whatever, whatever happened. And what happened in each other's weeks. And we clown, we, you know, you get to know us a little better what's happening. And we talk about the real things about baby daddy, drama, baby mama, just like moving in your house, in the neighborhood being towed up, whatever it is we talk about. And then we do pictures, you know, we do current events and stuff and uh, crazy news. And then we bring a celebrity on and uh, we sit there and talk to the celebrity about whatever. We get personal. And at the end, we do a spin the wheel thing where they gotta, if it lands on something, you got to do it. Like tell how you lost your virginity, mm -hmm. if you could trade places with anybody, mm -hmm. read a, a sexual passage out of one of our books. So yeah. it's a lot of fun. So yeah. people come on my show, love it. I don't know why they like it. They love it. They're like, man, this is one of my favorite podcast because it's not just no disrespect to everyone else, but sitting around the room being interviewed. Yeah. We play a game, we talk shit, you know, whatever. Um, and I love it, man. So people have already approached me about putting it on something else, you know, besides mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to my page, Comic Pierre, C-O-M-I-C-P-I-E-R-R-E, -R -R -E, Comic Pierre, you'll see some clips. But we're doing season two. Uh, I already taped 10, 10 episodes. Um, I got a Michael Jackson impersonator. I, I bring I brought Clifton Powell back. Life Jennings is on it. Mm -hmm. Who else I got? I a whole bunch of people, man. But, um, and we know, the good thing about it, I have relationships with most of these people. So I can ask ignorant questions. Like, you know, when we was on tour, nigga, you know what she was doing on tour. What about the homegirl? You know, you get that, you know, we do a little something, something in the hotel. We have fun, you know, and they're all like, hey, well, that shit, they got married. I said, they married. I tried to stay away from it, but they're not. We clown. They be like, boy, you ain't you something else. And I push it, man. I push it and have fun and have fun with it. So people who see it, love it. So I'm just trying to get, you know, I'm doing more of these interviews to get the word out about it. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah. I, I, I personally uh, listen to Panic Room on, uh, I started on YouTube and then I saw, mm -hmm. I started listening on Spotify and I was mm -hmm. like, this is hilarious. I think my favorite one was with Country Wayne. Cause you guys are yeah. just like going back and forth. It's so oh, yeah. hilarious. Oh, yeah. And Country Wayne, I've never seen his stand up, but I watch all his videos and they're okay. hilarious. And I know oh, he's yeah. down there with you in Atlanta. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that you guys would do more work as a, uh, as, sure. well, as the years go by but uh my last and final question for you because mm -hmm. i know you guys talk, talk about a lot of great things on uh comedy comedy hype um mm -hmm. i just want to know what where were you and what were you thinking on january 6th when all those people stormed the capitol 
Uh, well, I was actually in D.C. Uh, I'm oh. from the Washington metro, D.C. metropolitan area. I was. Uh, I'm remodeling. I'm re. Uh, remodeling my, my father's house unfortunately he passed a couple months ago and he left the house to me so i said let me remodel it i'm not going to sell it i'm just going to fix keep it in the family but i did a whole root of the tutor you know roof ceiling everything new kitchen bathroom everything. so i was i was there um when i saw that uh, i mean i've been around so long brother you know white folks acting foolish Ain't nothing surprising to me, shit, okay? <laughs> it was nothing surprising to me. I was just happy it wasn't black folks up in there because there's been yeah. some shooting going on in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it showed the underbelly of the ugliness of America, you know, parts mm -hmm. of America. And then white folks, I understand why the white folks are mad because they're losing their grip mm -hmm. of this country, mm -hmm. of being the rulers. Mm -hmm. They have to understand you got to share this country with everybody. Mm -hmm. And they hate that, boy. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 you know, now they're getting sometimes treatments that we black people have gotten. I say weak. I mean, I'm black and I'm white, but you know, I, you know, right. I'm right on the black side as much as I can. You know, until you know, until y'all niggas act too crazy. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be white. Come on, dude. What you doing, man? Come on, guy. <laughs> what those Negroes doing over there? Um, but no. So uh, it's funny to see them crying when they're getting arrested or pushed around and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's un American. It's un American. Oh, now it's un American. When, mm -hmm. You know, when you guys did it, you know, when you and I love Chappelle's special when he was talking about um, the opioids and stuff, yeah. and how, yeah, I love that line about how white people were, you know, they're all sad now. Like, no, nah, ha hang in there, whites, you know, you, you, you want us to hang in there with crack and shit. So, hey, it'll be okay, you'll be all right, just say no. So, that reverse shit is, is, is getting to them too much, man. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really a certain segment of white people because a lot of white people are down to help, you know what I'm saying? I know I have a lot of white friends who feel that, 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 that the, the pain of, of, of you know, that we went through, I mean, not, not you know, viscer viscerally feel us, but they understand how we went through some of the stuff we went through. So I like them folks, but them, them rednecks and I, hey, in, in, in Atlanta, you take a, let me tell, let me tell you something, <laughs> get in your car and drive a half hour to 45 mm -hmm. minutes outside of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It ain't the same Atlanta you think. Okay. It ain't the same Georgia. <laughs> You're going to see them uh, like you know, Trump supporters. <laughs> same thing with, with, with DC metropolitan area. Mm. Put that gas on, put that pedal to the metal for 45 minutes. Mm. And before you know, hit stop. Then be like, where the hell am I? Mm. <laughs> 45 minutes outside of DC or 45 minutes outside of Atlanta. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. we got to get those folks, man, together. But yeah, I just say, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, I, it didn't surprise me to see that on, on January 6th. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't surprise me either. But I, I, I just had to get another perspective because um, sure. I, I was talking about it with some of my friends and family, and they're basically saying the same thing. But um, man, uh, Pierre, I, I definitely appreciate you, man, uh, for being on the show. Uh, oh, I know we had linked up uh, uh, before, uh, just uh, trying to get you on the show. So I really do appreciate it. Where can good. everyone find you on social media, and also shout out uh, all the podcasts and things that you're doing as well. Um, go to Comic Pierre, C O M I C P I E R R E. Comic Pierre, mostly Instagram. Uh, Facebook, it's Pierre Edwards, but it's also uh, Comic Pierre. Mm. Um, that's where most of my stuff is, Comic Pierre. But my YouTube, I go to YouTube and Comic Pierre. That's where you can catch my podcast. Boom, boom, boom. If you want to catch that and continue watching me on YouTube on Comedy Hype, man. I enjoy doing it. Uh, I enjoy keeping it, you know, keep giving you my perspective of stuff, and that's what they respect. So I appreciate it, man. And I appreciate you having me and giving a voice to, you know, another outlet for people to speak and get their voice out, you know, to be heard. Yeah, I think I do appreciate it. And uh, I have to say with everyone that I've interviewed, uh, other comedians like TK Kirkland and and uh, some other ones that I had that, that escaped me, uh, you guys really do support a lot of up and coming black media outlets. So I really do mm -hmm. appreciate you guys coming on and spending time talking to me for uh, for however long. And you guys are super amazing. So uh, guys, if you follow me by any source, go check out what Pierre's doing. He has a lot of cult classic films and a lot of cool things that he has going on. I, I can't wait for his movies. I also cannot wait to see what's on, going to go further on in the Panic Room season two. Oh, I yeah. can't wait to see that because that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that podcast is hilarious. I love what they're doing. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I don't know if you're, if you're in the Detroit area, mm -hmm. February 12th through the 14th, we're doing, uh, I'm doing six shows at Burt's Warehouse Theater. It's a little theater, uh, it's a little social distancing show. So yeah. Uh, February, yeah, Valentine's Day weekend. If you're in Detroit, come out and support me. If you ever come out and see, because you saw me in here, you got to say, man, I saw you hanging with Alex, man. You got to tell me that, okay? Yeah, All definitely. Right. Yeah, definitely. If you see, if you go see Pierre uh, anytime between now and his show, let let him know that you saw me, on saw saw him on my show. So please. There it is. 
do that do that and um once again pr thank you so much for being on the show thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe to my youtube channel and as always you guys you have a blessed day <laughs>